painful part of it was the loneliness. And the depression was so heavy that there was no hope. There was no escape. There was no way out of this place. And the smell was like a sulfur, like an electric welder. And the, the stench was, was terrible. And as I looked at this, I had seen people killed. I had been involved in fights where people were killed. I'd done time in prison for manslaughter myself. I grew up basically in a reform school and in a jail cell. I was beat on mercifully as a child by a father that had temper problems and alcohol problems. I was a runaway at 12 years old and I felt like there was nothing in this world that could frighten me. My life was wrecked, my marriage was wrecked, my health was wrecked, but now I'm seeing something that literally scares me to death because I don't understand it. And as I'm looking into this, this pit, this place of fire and screams and, and torment, I just fade out into blackness. And when I open my eyes, I'm in a hospital room in Knoxville, Tennessee. My wife is sitting by. There have been uh, multiple stitches put in my body. My arm was spared. Uh, there was almost a hundred stitches. And I, I looked in the face of my wife. And I wasn't concerned about where I was or anything around me. All I could visualize was what I had just seen. He had this funny look on his face. And it was a terrifying look. And he said, he said, I don't really know what's happened to me, but he said, I've been in a terrible place. And I kept telling him, you're in the hospital. You've, you've been in the hospital all along. And he kept saying, no. He said, I've been in another place. He said, he said I don't know exactly what it was, but he said it was terrible. It was a terrible place. I could still hear the screams. I could still smell the terrible smell. I could still feel the heat. And I could still hear the voices of people that I'd known through the years screaming for me to go back. And through the days to come, I tried every way to get that out of my mind. I tried to get drunk. I could not get drunk. I tried to get stoned. I could not get stoned. I tried everything that I could to get this off my mind, and I could not. One morning, several months later, I, I came home to where my wife was. I'd been trying to get drunk. I couldn't. And when I walked in the house, went back to the bedroom, the light was burning. My wife was sitting up in bed. And she had a large book open on her lap. And she looked up at me and her face was literally shining. And she said, Ronnie, tonight I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And she didn't have to say a lot to me. Our life had been filled with, with agony. She grew up in Chicago. Her father was a bartender on the south side of Chicago. She knew nothing about God or church or religion. And the pain in her face, the wrinkles that I'd put in her face with abuse and violence and alcoholism and drug addiction, being gone for months at a time and her and the kids not knowing where I was, her face had changed. The wrinkles were literally gone. The smile had replaced the sorrow and agony. And she looked at me and she said, Jesus, save me tonight. And she said, would you go with me and hear about this man called Jesus? And I thought for a second and I thought, I've tried everything else in life. Nothing has worked for me. The people that I love most of all, my wife and my children, I'm, I'm terrible to them. And I agreed to go with her. And a couple of weeks later on a Sunday morning, a matter of fact, the date was November the 2nd, 1972. Just before 12 o'clock a.m., 
a minister stood to, to read from the Bible. I was sitting in the back of the building. I didn't know anything out of the Bible. I did not know how to act in church. But the minister stood to read from the Bible. And he read from the Gospel of John. And he began to read these words that said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. When he said the Lamb, he had my attention. It wouldn't have meant anything to me, any other passage. But when he mentioned the Lamb, he had this hard-hearted sinner's attention. Because when I was nine years old, a very poor child in the mountains of eastern Tennessee, with a father that only knew anger and, and abuse and alcohol, a neighbor had given me a baby lamb. And I had to walk two miles to catch the school bus. And coming through her yard, she stopped me one day and said, Son, I have a gift for you. And she showed me this baby lamb. And I took that lamb home with me. It was my friend. The only friend I felt like I had. And it was uh, such a friend in days and weeks to come. It, it followed me and it would, it would meet me when I got off the school bus and came walking through the woods and the fields. One evening as I came in, the lamb was missing. And I heard my father cursing and screaming. And I looked up to the side of the house. And there he was working on on an old model car, changing a flat tar by hand the old way. And I tried to walk around to you, because I didn't want to be cursed. Right. And I tried to, to bypass him. Want. And when I got on the other side of the car, I looked down and there was my lamb with blood all over the white wool and a tar tool sticking in its body. Yeah. The lamb had come around just wanting to be curious and in a drunken fit of anger and my father had plunged the tire arm through that lamb's body and when I saw my lamb my friend dead I began to scream as a nine-year-old child I run into the woods screaming he's killed my lamb he's killed the lamb and at nine years old Hatred and violence took my life, possessed my life. And from that point, I was never, never, ever the same. By 12 years old, I was a runaway. I was in the juvenile system, arrested time after time after time. There was no respect for authority. I hated anyone that represented authority over me. And by the time I was 15 years old, I had been in jail for car theft, for stealing. And at 15 years old, I was sentenced for manslaughter, involved in a car accident that had taken life and crippled others for life. Wondering at that time if life ever would hold anything for me. But when that minister mentioned the lamb he had my attention and he said Jesus Christ is God's lamb and he died and he shed his blood that whosoever will could have a new start could be forgiven could start over that morning as I stood to try to leave the building I thought I don't want anybody to see me cry I've not cried since I was nine years old I'm not afraid of any living thing on this earth and no one's going to see me cry. But I turned to leave, but I started down the aisle toward the front of that building. And my prayer was this. I didn't know the sinner's prayer. I didn't know the Roman road of salvation. But my prayer was this. God, if you exist, and Jesus if you are God's lamb, please, please kill me or cure me. 
I don't want to live anymore. 